um, and I'll go through the whole process if you want to, from um, actually grabbing footage to rotoscope, um, all the way uh, up to starting to animate it on the existing rigs. Um, so the first thing I need, and again, you have questions to ask, um, is I need something to rotoscope. Um, I was going to do this. And I only want one scene of this, one small scene of it. This is actually the longer one. I want these guys, and I'm going to try to do just one of these guys. So I want good footage of them standing roughly still in like one view, which we're going to call like a forward view. First thing, I got to get that. Um, you'll notice I have this in the highest quality I can get, and there is a website called KeepVid that enables you to pull the file off of YouTube or other sources. Download. Um, it's Java-based. Good. Now I want to get the highest quality I can get. Um, probably that one. Uh, so let's click it, and it's starting to download it. Um, I wish I could load this directly into Softimage. I generally cannot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it into another program, and I'm going to take out the section I want and make it a bunch of frames so that I can rotoscope those frames. Uh, first, we'll find it. Show it in the folder right there. Um, let's double-click that. You'll see this is the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't think I can export it from here. There might be a way I'm able to. Uh, but I'm going to use, I'll probably, I'll use part of After Effects like we did for um, when we're rendering. Um, let me head over to After Effects. There are some open source solutions you can use too, but if you have After Effects around, may as well use After Effects. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I don't even need to worry about this right now because I'm just going to bring the footage in. We'll close that window. Uh, I'm going to go to Project, eh. File, Import, File. I have to find where that is. That was um, in my downloads, which I'll go the long way around to get to. Uh, users. BCC, downloads. Okay, it's going to tell me it's 480 by 360, which is right. It's 4 minutes, 47 frames long, which I don't want it to be, clearly. Um, I will, you know what, maybe I'll just drag it to the timeline or take a look here. Um, okay, that's fine. And we'll go to 100%. It's fairly small, which is good. And if I look at my timeline here, which I'm going to modify a bit, I want to hunt around for the section I want. Here are the Nicholas Brothers. Probably something around here. I'm going to go back and forth with my page up and page down keys to try to figure the exact moment I want to grab. Maybe from that cut. Yeah, maybe we'll wait for Cab Calloway to leave. Man, they're tricky. I'm going to start there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that layer, split it. 
uh, layer, edit, split layer, which will make me a new layer right where that starts. And then I can go down to see how far I want. We'll take to that spin. That's a good one, two, three, like that. And I'll go right to where the arms are out here. Yeah. I'm going to split it again. And that little piece is the only piece I need. So I can delete these other two layers. Delete. Delete. And then this tiny piece here is the part I really want to output. Mm -hmm. We'll push that back to the beginning of our timeline. There it is. Uh, which is good. That's only a few seconds of footage as you can see. About two seconds worth. I wonder if I can play it. I didn't think I could. Ah. Yes, there we go. I'm just going to tuck it up right to there. And that's everything I want. Now let's get it as an image sequence. Uh, I'm going to go to Composition, Add to Render Queue. I wonder if it's going to let me do that as a, as, it's not really a composition, but I think it turned it into one when I threw it in there. Good. Um, I want to go to lossless here, and I want to make sure I'm putting out an image sequence. Um, TIFFs, probably the best choice. Format options, um, well, that doesn't matter so much. The naming of it matters quite a bit. If I go over here, um, this is what the files are going to be called, and those numbers are going to be numbers in the file name. The easiest place to get them is to put them in an existing project that I already have and put them in the pictures directory. So I'm going to go into Francis, which is a project I have on my C drive, and I'm going to go into pictures, um, and you'll see I already have some other stuff in here. Uh, and I'm going to call this um, something without spaces or numbers. I'm going to call it uh, Nicholas for the Nicholas Brothers, and I'll lose that, but I'll put in a period, and I'll lose one of these, and that means it should write me out Nicholas period zero zero whatever frame number period TIFF. Uh, and let me make sure it's only putting out the first couple of seconds. Uh, the frame rate, uh, custom. I want to make sure it stops on the last frame um, of my composition of the sequence I have, I should say. Uh, so let's go back there for a second. Good. Let's go back here for a second. Uh, the last frame is right there, which it should tell me, 209. Once I know it's 209, I can go back here and go, we want you to end at um, zero two seconds, nine frames. Okay. And I'm ready to render that. This should be pretty quick. Good. If that worked, I should have a directory, which we'll look at quick. See, uh, Francis, pictures. If we get these by date, we should see them too come up. There they are. Fabulous Nicholas Brothers. Um, see how they're numbered all nice and neatly? Nicholas 000 to uh, Nicholas 59. Um, there's even a thing you can do, which is kind of nice, where you can sort of see them animated like this. If you get your speed right. And a couple other things if you list them properly. But either way, we know they're there. Important part. Um, now here's where the rotoscoping comes in. I'm going to do a new scene. Uh, new scene, no, and I want to go to that directory actually, so let's do that as well. Um, let's go to the project manager um, that was called Francis, and it's in C, and I'll make a new scene right here, which I'm going to call Nicholas Brothers. Let's see, we'll hit new scene first, good. Uh, and I will save it as Nicholas 1, Nicholas 1. Okay, now, I can rotoscope in any window. 
Um, there are controls to do that. I want to do it in this front window because I'm going to take our existing rig. Uh, we're using um, this rig. And I'm going to try to make this rig match that action. So in this window here, I'm going to go under Rotoscopy Options and New from File. And this is good. Since I put them in the right place, they're already sitting there. I can just click this, and it should know they're there. Yes. OK. Now I do attach the camera, and I'll show you why momentarily. Um, actually, I'll do the other one, but we'll see. To turn it on, I click here. And we now have the rotoscoped image there for me to match to. Uh, I'll lose the grid, because the grid will get kind of lost. You'll see these are not locked together, though. Uh, I want to position and lock this together so that my scale works properly. Um, and I'm going to make this one bigger so I can see these other ones. Um, I'll even position myself a bit. Let's go to the first frame where I see them. Right about there. Let me step it. There we go. Um, that's not awful. I'm going to use the S key and move around a little bit. And I'm going to try to center the hips. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit bigger because the legs are bent. And when I bend the legs, I think it will match up fairly well to that. Once I have that matched, I then click this button. And that will keep these locked together. That's very important, or else all your rotoscoping kind of is for naught. Um, another issue I have is this is black and white, and it means it's very hard to see where my effectors are. Um, because of that, I might want to change the colors of the wireframes. Uh, if I go File, Preferences. Uh, and scene colors, this is where I can do that. Uh, I'm going to make selected ones um, red. Man, I thought that would have changed. Uh, and I'll make branches um, a different type of red. There we go. Uh, and um, unselected geometry will also make a different shade of red. What that would mean now is if I deselect, well, that's different anyway. But if I had geometry in it, it would look differently. And when I select it, I see it as red rather than white. Um, this is where I would actually start the rotoscoping. And it might be worthwhile to save again right now because I have everything set up. Uh, we'll save this as Nicholas 2. Nicholas 2. OK. Now I start animating piece by piece. I should have a synaptic view with this. so. Um, I actually am going to start with this thing, which is um, called the base SRT, Scale Rotate Translate. Um, if I select something, I hit F3 and I get this. This thing down here will control the entire model at once. See? So the first thing I'm going to animate is I'm going to animate that following uh, said Nicholas brother. And I'll recenter all these things here. Um, we'll probably start with the rotations. So let's key that. And let's step forward and see where rotation starts. Uh, I'm, let's see where he goes. Most of that's going to be hips. Right here, I'm going to key him again. Um, with just a slight tilt, and I'll explain why momentarily. Um, I'll be locking it in place, and then he does a full rotation. Let's see where the last frame is I have, around there, by there. We'll try to get him to roughly the same place. Remember to key it, and we should have this happening. Oh, but I misplaced some keyframe somewhere. Um, that's easily enough handled. Uh, I hate to say easily handled, but it's handled. You know what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to undo my way out of that. 
Um, I didn't get my other keyframe locked in is why that happened. Let's start there. Let me guide it up to where I want that keyframe to lock it, which I'm going to say is right here. Let me key that. Okay, now I want to start the rotation. And I can enter it, by the way. That might be a better way of doing it. Um, I'm on this axis. So let's do 360. Let's do 350. Good. And let's key that. And hopefully that's going to match him. Mm, I got to adjust it a little. Um, I might actually do that in the curve editor. Uh, it might be simpler. Uh, where's my curve editor, my animation editor? There it is. Uh, I'll dismiss this for a sec, select this, because this is what's really going on here, and we'll figure out when he starts to rotate. He starts to rotate a couple frames earlier, so let's pull this back a little bit and see if that helped. Good, he's rotating at the right time. I think that's better. Yes, I think that is better. Okay, um, I then keep going through these things. Uh, let's go back here to a top view. I would go through it attribute by attribute. Uh, the next thing I would probably do is the hips, um, which is this effector right here. And I'm gonna do that with location actually first. So I'll turn on translation and I wanna position the hips where I think they should be roughly and key it I might even turn on auto keying, but I may regret that. I'm going to step forward and see where the hips move to. That's a slight move. That's another slight move. That's another slight move. <laughs> I'll put them back here. And let's line them up with them. They're up a little bit. And we'll say they land. And now let's try the rotations on the hips. Um, his hips are slightly rotated this way, I would say. And I believe he's leaned forward slightly. And I have auto keying on, so let's step and see what happens next. He keys to about there. And note, I'll go back and forth and check this all the time. He actually takes a bigger dip there, but let's get the keying on it right first. His hips are about here. Let me see if that lines up with it. Uh, eh, that's okay. That might work. I'll find out. I think it gets to about back here. Okay. That's starting to get in position. Um, let's try one hand, because one hand will probably get me much closer. I'm going to grab the hand effector here, and I just have to worry about translation on this. So we'll put it where we think it should be roughly, which is about there. And let's see where it moves to. We'll put it down there. Wow, it moves fast in that one. <laughs> I want to see when it gets all the way down to his side. About there. Good. Okay, I would do this for hours. If I did it for enough hours, and I go back and forth, and I check things, eventually it lines up. Okay? Um, let me stop this capture.